Well, hey there, Calvary family. My name is Robert, one of your pastors, joining you here for your word for the day. You know, this is, I think, our 72nd episode, and the first time your word for the day was not filmed in the foyer of our Sweetwater campus. And some of you were like worried, like, why isn't he at church? Why isn't he there? Well, I'm in my office at our McCulloch campus, and I'm here because I forgot to schedule a time with our videographer and this needed to get put up for today. So this is Wednesday's word for the day and uh, I wanna be sharing with you from the book of Proverbs. And you know, for the last several days and weeks, we've been sharing Proverbs and wanna continue to encourage you to read a proverb a day. God has given us the book of Proverbs for our wisdom, for our benefit, for our growth, and there's so much in it that that just speaks to our life and helps us grow in our faith and walk with God. So if you're not doing this, let me encourage you to do that. But, but also, if this is something that you've done a lot, the challenge for us is we start to recognize some of the, the, the phrases, some of the verses from Proverbs, and, and Oftentimes we can fail to see how they directly connect to our life or maybe they're just a little too familiar. So if that's you and you've regularly read from ESV or NIV or KJV or one of those, you know, New American Standard, one of those more traditional translations, let me encourage you to to maybe switch up and start reading Proverbs from a, a more um, modern translation like the New Living Translation or CEV or one of those. Um, that just puts things in a much more modern perspective. And I love uh, NLT, the New Living Translation, because especially for Proverbs, because it just connects so well to our life today. And so I want to share from the New Living Translation, Proverbs 13, 18. It says, if you ignore criticism, you will end in poverty and disgrace. But if you accept correction, you will be honored. Now, think about that for a second, because if we're honest, none of us like correction, none of us like criticism, none of us like rebuke, but yet Proverbs points out here and elsewhere that if we ignore it, it says here that we'll end in poverty and disgrace. I don't know about you. I don't want to be in poverty. I don't want to be disgraced. I actually would much rather people not disgrace anything having to do with my life. So how do we prevent that? Well, it says that we do that by by accepting criticism and correction. Now, this is an issue of humility, of us being willing to hear from other people how we may have messed up. None of us like this, though. And I think the tendency that we have is, one, to say, hey, everything someone says critically is true, and I've just messed up, I'm inadequate, I'm a failure. Or we swing to the other side and we say, these people don't know anything I know me, I know my truth, and they're wrong, I'm right, I'm not listening to anything they have to say. So how do we get to the middle? I think there's three steps that we take in uh, evaluating and accepting criticism in a biblical way. First, the very first step is as you receive that, give thanks, but do not defend. Don't defend yourself. Our default reaction is to immediately jump into our defense mode and say, no, that's not what happened. You don't understand. Let me explain my motives. Let me explain my intent, not what happened. All this, we want to explain. We want to give reasons and explanations. Don't do that right away. Instead, just say, thank you for your input. Thanks for pointing that out. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And leave it right there. Give thanks, but don't defend. Secondly, evaluate it for truth evaluate what was brought to your attention. And part of that is evaluating who's bringing it to your attention. Is it a friend who cares deeply about you and knows you really well? Or is it an enemy that that may not have your best interests at at heart? See, Proverbs uh, also talks about this. Chapter 27, verse 6 says um, that faithful are the wounds of a friend, but an enemy's kisses are deceitful. So it's pointing out like, hey, a friend's correction may hurt, but it's good for you. It's faithful. But even if an enemy praises you, it may not be helpful. So evaluate who's bringing it to you, but then also evaluate what level of truth is there. Is everything that they said in correction true and you need to apply it and and change your course of action? Or is 10 or 15% of what they said true? Because we can look and say, okay, let's look objectively. Did I mess up? Did I do something wrong? Is there a character issue in my life that I need to correct? Evaluate it for truth. And then finally, apply the correction. Live out the correction you need to take in order to be more faithful to who God's called you to be in the life that he wants you to live. 
And as we do that, we start to have a better balance of understanding how to accept correction. Because if we walk our whole life without ever hearing, accepting, listening to correction or rebuke, it says it will end in poverty and disgrace. But if we are humble and we're willing to submit that maybe we have some things to learn from other people and we accept correction, it says we will be honored. God's going to bless our life and continue to grow us and teach us. So this week, I hope that you're willing to to listen to correction and criticism from those around you in a healthy way so that God can use it to correct and grow and shape you into who he's created you to be. It's not easy, but in the end, it will bless our life. I hope that that this has been helpful for you today on this Wednesday, and uh, I hope to see you next time for your word for the day.